Hey friends, welcome back. This is Ashley with Uncommon Roots Homestead. Today it is, well, a little sunny right now, but it's actually a pretty rainy day. So I'm not gonna be spending time out in the garden this afternoon. Instead, I wanna show you guys some of the finds that we found when we went thrifting yesterday and make a harvest meal with some of the awesome foods that we've been bringing in from the garden. So let's do it. Okay, before we get started, I have to show you my coffee. Look at that. I didn't even try to make a heart. It just turned out that way. Mm. Genie milk lattes are the best. Okay, before we get started, I wanna talk about what some of the most common meals that we make with all of the produce that we're bringing in in the harvest season. So obviously we are getting a lot of squash. We're getting a lot of summer squash varieties right now. Soon we'll be getting winter squash in from the garden. Winter squash is a little bit less time sensitive because most of it will store for months on end. And so usually we cure that and then just store it in, and we'll use it throughout the winter. Um, sometimes we'll make soup and things like that in bulk in the beginning. But summer squash is definitely something that I'm trying to find new creative ways to use in the harvest season. The other thing that we're getting a lot of right now is eggplant. Um, we have a ton of our Japanese eggplant that are coming ripe. Um, what we've been doing with these is slicing them up, doing an egg wash with a little bit of flour, and then like dredging them in flour, then another egg wash, and then putting them in breadcrumbs um, and putting them in the air fryer. And that's been amazing. We're also starting to get some peppers in and obviously tons of tomatoes. So. These tomatoes I picked, gosh, probably two days ago. I have two baskets full, um, ton of tomatoes. This is probably six pounds. Um, and then that's probably another three or four. So I've got a lot of tomatoes. There's more ripe on the vine. We're just now starting to get our, ugh, our large, our big boy tomatoes in. Um, so this one was one pound, six ounces or something crazy like that. So these are starting to come ripe too, which means I'm just, I've got an overwhelming amount of tomatoes. So what that means, I mean, the kids will eat cherry tomatoes. I usually keep this little ramekin dish um, out on the counter full of cherry tomatoes and the kids will just snack on them and they eat them fresh. Um, I also often will roast tomatoes and then pack them into a jar, top them with oil. I'll show you that in another video. It's one of our favorite ways to preserve tomatoes, but the best way to preserve tomatoes and the best kind of thing that we make that's kind of a harvest meal is sauce, tomato sauce. Fresh tomato sauce is amazing. And often I think people are intimidated by like, I don't have an amazing tomato sauce recipe, so I'm just not even gonna touch it. Well. I guess the secret's out. I never use a recipe. I never have the same sauce. It always tastes a little bit different. I just kind of taste it along the way as I'm cooking it and it always turns out amazing. So tonight, what we're gonna be doing is making homemade pasta. Um, so I'll show you how we do that. Obviously the flour is not, like we're not growing wheat on our farm. I do buy einkorn berries from a um, local-ish market from Azure Standard. So they support US-based farmers. Um, I buy einkorn berries from there and then I mill them here and then I'm gonna use eggs from our farm. Those are the only two recipes in pasta, einkorn pasta. Um, and so I'm gonna be making a big batch of that because I'll dry some to store for later and then we'll eat some tonight. And then I'm gonna be roasting up some tomatoes um, with some peppers and some onions and some garlic. I'm gonna throw that all into the food processor. I'm gonna let it cook down really nicely. I'll taste it throughout. I might add a little bit of honey, definitely some salt um, and then some herbs fresh from the garden that entire sauce will be from the garden and then we're gonna do kind of a twist on it today and we're also gonna add some fresh cream from Jeannie to make kind of a tomato cream sauce to go over that fresh pasta I'm also gonna throw some basil in and some Parmesan cheese and some things that are um, well basil is from our farm but obviously Parmesan cheese is not 
And then usually I'll serve that just by itself. It's a great meal if you're, uh, you, you know, don't need a protein at every meal. Often we'll cook up some chicken as well or things like that. So that is our plan for dinner tonight. My friend Bree went out to pick some green beans with Isla, but she will be back in and she's gonna help me. So the first thing we're gonna do is roast these tomatoes and we'll get going. Okay, so the only thing I do when I'm roasting is I pop the tops off these. It makes it easier when it's all said and done. Um, you can rinse them. I don't use anything in my garden, so spoiler, I did not actually rinse these. I guess I could, but I probably won't. So I'm just gonna pop all of these off. Mm, this guy is a little, he split because of a rainstorm. So I'm gonna actually set him aside for the pigs. You could, you could cut that off and use it. I'm just, I have a ton of tomatoes, so I don't need to. Okay, so another really common misconception is that you only want to use paste tomatoes or, you know, special tomatoes for making sauce. I literally will use any tomato I grow. Pink boar, heirloom, like fancy tomato. It could be a San Marzano paste tomato. It could even just be like your regular old, this was just like some hybrid I picked up at our local nursery. I also have um, other, I have other heirloom varieties as well. Um, so I just throw them all on. And the other thing is I don't just do large tomatoes. I'll put all of my, um, like I'll put cherry tomatoes, I'll put mid-sized tomatoes, like I will put them all onto this sheet and I will roast them all together with a couple of peppers and probably two onions. I'm making enough sauce that I will actually can some after the fact um, before we put the cream in. I just put it all together and I adjust to taste later. So just try, follow your heart. I've never had a bad sauce when I was using all local or homegrown ingredients. So now that I have all of my tomatoes laid out in those sheet pans, I grabbed three onions. They're small to medium size. You can see. I'm gonna clean them up, take out that outer layer, and then I'm just gonna put them whole onto these pans to roast alongside the tomatoes. I'm actually gonna go grab two more onions. First of all, am I the only one that like onions seriously get me? I know that it's common, but like we use onions so often and I like lose it every time. Okay, I just, so this is my garlic. Um, I had a bunch of like discard garlic when I was braiding that just wasn't good enough to braid. So I cured it. <coughs> I'm joking. I cured it in the garage. Um, and then I brought it in here, cleaned it up, whatever. So I was opening this one and look at it. It is just one, it's definitely garlic, but it is just like one solid thing of garlic. It looks like an onion, but it's garlic and it's heavy. Have you ever seen this before? I've never seen this. I did not grow any weird varieties that should have ended like this. Crazy. Okay, so basically I threw the onions, some garlic, all the tomatoes, and a couple of peppers. I just went with a random assortment that we had ready. A couple of poblanos, a bell pepper. Um, I threw a couple of hot Italian peppers in there. So what I'm gonna do is drizzle all of this with olive oil and then I'm gonna roast them at 425 for probably 25 to 30 minutes until they start splitting, bubbling, and getting really soft. Then what I'm gonna do is take all of that, throw it into the food processor, then put it back on the stove, bring it to a simmer, and season to taste. OK, 
Can you believe all of this came out of my garden? I can't. I still can't believe that we're growing a legitimate amount of food. So crazy. So cool. Literally, I dreamt of this. Okay, so these are the einkorn berries that I was talking about. So all grain, all wheat starts out as berries. These are what grow at the end of a tall stalk. Um, so what I'm gonna do is take these einkorn berries, I'm gonna put them into the Nutra mill, and then I'm gonna mill them down fine. So what's gonna happen after that is it's actually gonna be whole wheat um, because this is the whole and I'm just grinding it down. If you wanted, that's like the, the difference between whole wheat flour and white flour is that the hull is sifted out. Actually different, it's just, we're gonna get all of this outside, which actually most of the nutrients in a wheat berry are in that uh, hull, that outer kernel. Um, we're gonna leave that in, especially for pasta. We don't notice any different. I corn. Isla says it's very good. Um, einkorn is a, one of my favorite um, berries to use because it is lower gluten um, and it's easier for your body to digest. So it's a lot of people who are gluten sensitive can actually eat einkorn. So we are, don't have gluten sensitivities, but we try to make healthy decisions. And so this is a much healthier um, flour for you. So I'm gonna mill this into flour and then Brie and I are going to make some pasta. Some pasta is very hard. Yeah, what's the pasta really hard? I don't know. So Brie just said, is that supposed to happen? The answer is no, that's not supposed to happen. Yeah, some pasta is a little crazy. No, what that means is that I did not push the insert all the way back. So everything that was being milled was shooting out the side and of shooting into the bucket. So I'm going to fix that. <laughs> so take two. Much better. It's your first time making pasta, right? Yep. I love that it's her first time too. Um, so basically, pasta, especially einkorn pasta, is super simple. All we're gonna do is a one-to-one -one ratio with eggs and flour. So every cup of einkorn that we use, we're gonna use one egg also. So I think we're gonna like, you know, start small, and I'm thinking like 12 or 18. <laughs> 12 or 18 uh, <laughs> cups and eggs. Um, mostly the reason that we want to do it in bulk is because we're going to eat it for dinner tonight, but then also we're going to dry some, and that way I don't have to make pasta for the next five, six, seven meals. Um, making pasta is kind of a pain. It definitely takes technique. What we're going to do is hill up our flour on the counter, create like a little bowl in the middle, crack our eggs into the bowl, and then incorporate the flour in. And so you're creating a dough. It's definitely a dry dough. Um, so you have to really work it to kind of get it moving the way that we need it to go. And then once that's happened, we'll separate it out. We will use our handy dandy. We're not doing this all totally from, you know, by hand. We're gonna use our attachments. We're going to um, flatten it and make it really thin strips, kind of like what you would use for lasagna. And then we're gonna run it through one of the pasta pieces. So we're not gonna actually be like cutting each piece or anything like that. <laughs> Shout out to KitchenAid for making everybody's lives easier. Um, <laughs> but we're gonna go ahead and do that now. So 
science telling Brie, I don't know what the science behind kind of like making this bowl and putting your eggs into it and then slowly incorporating the flour into your eggs. I don't know the science behind that. I'm sure I could Google it. I'm sure that some of you will tell me about it. I would love that, I would love to know. Um, but what I do know is that when I've tried to skip that step and just throw equal parts, flour and eggs into the KitchenAid and let it go, it does not turn out. So I don't know, something about like the slow incorporation and the way the gluten separates or something like that is probably what's happening. Um, but after we created that soft dough and kind of had it so it was sticking together, I did go ahead and throw it into the KitchenAid and let it knead a little bit. Um, it's just a lot easier than us trying to knead by hand. So we're going to make our second batch and this puts us at I actually only had enough to do two cups in mine, so five plus six, so we're gonna have 11 cups of pasta, which when I make dinner for a family of four, I usually do like three to four cups. So this will probably get us four meals, which is not too bad. So it is definitely a very dry dough. You can see it's um, stretchy, but super, super dry. It's not wet at all. It's not gonna stick to anything. So what we're gonna do now is take all of this, we're gonna roll it out, we're gonna cut it into sections, and then we're gonna roll those out so that they're as thin as we can get them, and then we're gonna run them through the KitchenAid pasta roller. Um, and so that's gonna help it get like super stretched. And what's crazy is that we'll take a portion, you know, maybe this big and we can roll it out as thin as we can get it and it'll be this long. Then we'll put it through the pasta attachment and it'll be like two feet long. And then we'll put it through the cutter and cut it into whatever shape we want. Yeah. What just happened happened because the dough got too dry so pasta is really finicky and you have to kind of move really quickly and i was telling brie like we're gonna get into like our rhythm here so i would just add a little bit more water and then start back from the beginning so we just need to get it working again um and then roll it out maybe fold over we don't want it to be i'm gonna do a cookie right everybody and i'm gonna do a cookie because that's what i do oh that's what she does but Basically, we want to get it manageable again, but then you don't want it to stick. So you want to roll it out. It's probably a little too wet, but roll it and it'll incorporate the water. Also, did anybody else notice that she immediately tried to blame me and said that I put it too thin? I was feeling very chatty today. Um, but anyways, it's really common. That's why we keep, so I keep any of the dough, I keep any of the dough that we are not actively using under a wet towel to try to keep that moisture in. And then we keep a little bowl of water so that we can kind of dip our fingers and keep it wet as we go. Because if it gets too dry, it's just gonna like shred apart like that. So let's try again. <laughs> there we go, that's better. Perfect. side and apologize for the background noise but over on my side I got that um, sauce all cooked up so what I did is I took all those roasted veggies put them in the food processor and then put it back into this container and then brought that to a simmer and now it's just resting it stays really hot in this crock so I'm not worried about it I'll just heat heat it up when we're ready to eat so what I'm gonna do is take a, a bit of that probably about a quart of that put it into a different saucepan, add my um, cream from Jeannie, and that'll create that cream sauce. What I'm gonna do right now, I grabbed some chicken, a local chicken from Springer Mountain Farm. 
He's upset. Okay, so we grabbed some local chicken. We have not processed our own chickens other than Jerry. Um, so we're gonna eat from another local farm. I, I'm gonna cook these chicken breasts up in like little strips so that we can put them on top of the pasta for anybody who wants that. And then we'll get putting this meal together. Also, look at that squash. Okay, so while everything is finishing, we've got all of our pasta drying. I've got the sauce simmering on the stove and I've got the chicken cooking. Um, and I'm about to put some homemade garlic bread in for my homemade sourdough. I wanted to show you a couple of things that I got at the thrift store. Okay, so Brie and I, so first Brie and I grew up together. We were neighbors when we were like, what, 12 or 13? Uh, yeah, about 13, 14, I think. Yeah. Um, and then Brie lived with my parents for a little bit after high school, after I went to college. Um, and so we've just kind of been best friends, more like family for ever at this point. Um, because we're getting old. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not old. <laughs> She's catching up. Um, but anyways, we've always loved thrift shopping. Like we, my mom used to take us like every Wednesday yeah. when the Salvation Army was 50% off on like their Wednesday deals. I don't know if they still do that, but, um, so we used to thrift shop all the time. And now Brie actually does Poshmark and like resells a bunch of stuff. So yep. she'll like go thrift and find a bunch of brands. What's your Poshmark called? Uh, Cheapskate Diary. It might have to like. I'll link, it it. <laughs> I'll link it below. Um, but anyway, so she finds like adorable stuff that you wouldn't have time to go like search through a bunch of thrift stores to find. And then she sells it on Poshmark so people can have access to all of the cool finds, which is awesome. Um, you know, I just love to be a hoarder and buy all of the things for me. So um, I have been having so much fun over on Instagram inviting all of you guys to come thrift with me and i have really enjoyed seeing what your styles are versus what my styles are because some of you are really haters on some of the things <laughs> some of the things that i love but i wanted to show you a couple of the things that we got first of all i got this adorable basket um so my mom said this is a sewing machine basket that never even crossed my mind did it cross yours no yeah. i thought it was like a picnic basket yeah i don't know what i thought it was but i think it's adorable it's like it's kind of like a treasure chest um I think it's adorable and I plan to use it as like decor in our new house, but I got, let me show you, look how adorable this teapot is. So it is a copper and brass teapot made in Holland um, and it's really in great shape. It has some like woven wood here at the top. I got this for $5, like that's a steal and it's beautiful and that'll look so good in the new house sitting on that beautiful range that we're putting in. Um, so I feel like that was a great deal. And then I got these. So now, before I show you, <laughs> on Instagram, these were a high topic of conversation. Out of like 700 votes, like 70% said no. Um, and the 30% that said yes are my new best friends because I love them. <laughs> but I got this set of antique, like vintage wine, what do you call this, like a goblet? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wine, goblets. <laughs> wine goblets. They're kind of like, I mean, it's like a glass, but it's a wine glass, but I feel like these will just look so good. So in the new house, we're only doing open shelving at the top. Um, so I just feel like these are gonna look so beautiful. And there were, it was a uh, complete set, so there's six. But like, how pretty are those? I mean, they're gorgeous. I need to they're really pretty. I love them. And then of course, I, never leave a thrift store without all of the baskets that I can find. If you have a large garden, then you know baskets are everything, especially in harvest season. I can't even tell you how many times this week we've been over at the farm and wanted baskets and like not had enough. And I'm not even sure how that's possible because I own so many <laughs> baskets. She does have a lot of baskets. I have so many, but like we still don't have enough. So um, I got a couple baskets too, but Anyways, I'm going to keep doing this over on Instagram um, where when I go to the thrift store, I'll bring you guys with me and let you vote. Um, I don't always listen to the votes, um, <laughs> but I'm working on it. Sometimes I'm on the fence and I'll ask if I should get something. And if the majority says yes, I get it. Um, or if the majority says no, I don't get it. Like the pillow that Brie wanted me to get. <laughs> I did not get that. And the majority said no. Actually, I think it flipped since after we left. Yeah. Um, but anyways... Thank you guys. Uh, I think it's time for us to go eat that pasta. It should all be ready. Yeah. All right, let's go do it. 
All right, friends, so it feels like it has been a whirlwind. It's been literally hours, four hours, <laughs> since, we, since we started this adventure. So we successfully took two trays full of vegetables from the garden and turned it into what is going to be an amazing meal. I added genie milk to this to create a cream sauce. So this is that sauce we made from all of the vegetables. This is that einkorn pasta that we made. And then we have this chicken from a local farm. So we're gonna plate this up. We are going to eat and enjoy. Thank you for joining us today. You always have a space in my garden and my kitchen. Until next time.